So today we're going to talk about a live catch sparrow trap, but I'm going to review one. And first I want to talk to you a little bit about why we would even bother trapping sparrows. What I'm showing you here are my backyard bluebird boxes. They also house tree sparrows, uh, this time your tree swallows, I mean. The reason we have boxes is because normally birds would use dead trees like this one that have been excavated by woodpeckers. When you don't have dead trees and you don't have holes in the trees, we put up imitations, which are these bluebird boxes. Now, I've done a lot of work to make sure and put out bluebird habitat, and this is a Peterson box here. And what happens is, sometimes other birds come and actually kill the bluebirds or they'll peck their eggs and keep them from hatching. So sometimes you have to take measures to collect and remove some of the invasive species that are killing the bluebirds in our environment. So, and here's another, of course, natural hole. But today we're gonna to look at a live catch sparrow trap. Some people set out traps like mouse traps or rat traps to catch birds that they think they don't want in their environment. That's not a good idea because you really don't know what's going in that trap. And here in this live catch trap, you've just watched a female cowbird go in. And look at the mechanism that she used to get inside. Why would we want to trap cowbirds? The male is there with the dark feathers and the light brown head and the female is drab. The cowbird does not make a nest. That female cowbird is an expert at timing her delivery of a fertile egg. So what she does is she flies into the nest of another bird, deposits her egg among the other bird's eggs, and her egg will hatch first, her baby will be larger, and will push out the baby birds of, for example, bluebirds or tree swallows or other native birds like the tufted titmouse. So these birds are kind of parasitic. Now here's a bird that's a problem for a lot of people and it's called the house sparrow. This is the male. He's already entered this live catch trap and you can see that the trap does not really stress out the bird. He's gone in and he's just taking advantage of the feed that's already available. I also want you to notice the feed that he's eating it's the tiny bird seed, not all black oil sunflower seeds, which is what I put in my uh, feeders. This is a chipping sparrow. It's really lightweight, and this bird can actually go in and out of the mechanism without triggering it and getting stuck. So their lightweight allows them to hop in and out, and you can adjust the sensitivity of this trap. Here we have two turtle, or two morning doves, I'm sorry, and in the foreground, we have a female red-breasted grosbeak. None of these birds can get into the trap. They're just too large. Here again is the chipping sparrow making its escape. So fine-tuning this teeter-totter um, mechanism keeps those birds from being trapped. And here's a tufted titmouse. Again, these are native songbirds that we hope to protect. In the foreground is another chipping sparrow. And up high there is, again, the male house sparrow, which is known to peck sitting bluebirds while they're on their eggs on their nest, and in some cases peck to death the offspring after they've hatched. Now inside the live catch trap here, again, is a white crown sparrow, and I'm releasing it because obviously this is a native bird that we don't want anything bad to happen to, and this is the reason why a live catch sparrow trap system is the best. Now, if you're gonna set one of these up, you must monitor the trap. You can't just leave birds in here for long periods of time. So if I'm not gonna be able to keep an eye on the trap, I'm not going to um, set it up at all, or I'll block the mechanism so it doesn't function. And this white crown sparrow is gonna go right into the holding area of this trap. Now, something interesting happened with this particular sparrow. It found that walking into the trap was no big deal. 
So this same sparrow has come back time and again, and they walk in and they just go through the little teeter-totter mechanism. They walk in and they eat seed, and then it waits for me to release it. And there it goes. Now it's back again. Catch it again, release it again. Now I'd like you to take the time to look in the description of this video and see some of the links about what the National Wildlife Federation recommends about the house sparrow. This white crown sparrow became so tame that I could actually get right up next to it and make this video. Of course, as soon as it flies away and there's food in it, it's right back in the sparrow trap. So a side effect I did not anticipate is that some of the birds become so comfortable going into the trap and waiting to be collected and released that they come back often and they actually become desensitized to people. I don't know if that's a good idea. I don't really want a wild bird as a pet, but this bird obviously doesn't see it as a problem to come be handled and turned loose over and over again. Let's look at the details of the trap. This is the teeter-totter mechanism. It is completely adjustable. You'll see that there's a counterbalance at the other end and it's just a large bolt. This is a bird's eye view of the landing board and then that's what entices them into the trap is that collection of food there. You also sprinkle food on the top. There's a release here for this um, hardware cloth. So if a bird did get into this part of the mechanism, you could open it and release it. And you can see how the bolt would slide closer or farther out to make it either more sensitive or less sensitive. But I think it's perfect. And that's the way it came right from uh, the manufacturer. This holding area is a perfect length so that you can stick your arm in up to the elbow and reach any part of it. And here's the opening. Now, once you open it, it could probably benefit from a little handle here, but I just used my fingernail. There's a rubber flap there so that when you open it and before you've stuck your arm in, the birds don't just fly out. And of course, the whole purpose of it is so that you can hold the birds and decide whether to handle them, release them, whatever you decide to do. But again, never set up this mechanism without monitoring it closely. And here it is, uh, sparrowtraps.net, where I got this one. There are probably several other versions out there. This is the one that I decided on and it works perfectly and does not stress the birds. And now I'll just give you a close up look at what keeps the birds in the holding area once they come through. It's just a lightweight piece of hardware cloth that the birds look through and they see that there's more food. And of course they have no options unless you're a lightweight chipping sparrow, they just push this little hanging piece open and they walk in and there they are. So overall, uh, it's a pretty simple design. It's wide open. So the birds don't panic and injure themselves while they're in it. Of course, you definitely do not want to leave birds in this for a sustained period of time. And before we close out this video, I'm going to show you one last look of a chipping sparrow going in, moving, popping out, and then flying away. So I don't even have to go and release that bird. Of course, we're still gonna see the white crown sparrow again, I'm sure, over and over. So if you're looking at live catch sparrow traps, this is a pretty good design. Never use one without monitoring it. Thanks for watching, and I hope you'll stick around to see some of my other videos.